and I'm not sure how far we get in this kind of, very well, we can try. Um, should we just start with the uh, um, people who want to present something? So we have that done. Then continue with uh, DevConf 6, how, how that went. What do you think? And who wants to start with um, how the, the DevConf 7 venues? Okay. I'm fixing the network at the moment, that's why it's fine. Um, what about, can you start? Do you have what on your laptop? I have the PDF. They have PDF and it works with your? No, we start with step from seven. Yes, so we have it over. We have that out of the way. So, um, if, you, if, if, if yours works, that would be. Yes, it was a camera on the oh, okay. we have at least. Uh, not show up on the second. Yeah. Yeah. We don't really. I, I, I want to Who's the moderator? Me. Who's the moderator? What's next? Comp 2007 Edinburgh, so you can read along with me if you really want. We first thought about holding DevConf in Edinburgh um, at DevConf 5, I believe it was. Uh, it was a combination of ideas. Steve McIntyre was one of the uh, main people who brought it up. Uh, we'd been running a list and trying to organize various venues and details, which I'll go into further later for about five or six months now. Uh, and we've been researching various places. Uh, initially, we started off by looking at lots of places in the UK, so not just up at Edinburgh, also Birmingham, also, also some in London and Dublin and Cambridge, uh, because the Cambridge Cabal like Cambridge, because they live there. Um, so initially we had a look at all these various places, some were dismissed. We finally decided on Edinburgh, as London is far too expensive. Dublin can have issues with people getting there because the uh, transport isn't great from lots of places. So we finally decided to move on to Edinburgh. Now, Edinburgh is a good place for various venues. You probably can't read uh, most of the text here. Uh, 
yeah, sorry, we had some other slides, but my laptop, I upgraded UDEV on my laptop and it's not working now. <laughs> so, this is an actual picture from the UK UUG conference in 2003, which was held in Edinburgh. It's a very large conference that's held once or once every two years or once a year, uh, which has basically all the UK lugs gather in a place. Uh, and there's, and there's, the, uh, there's the Debian developers hacking at the back of the room, <laughs> ignoring the talks. As they seem to like to. This wasn't actually in the venue we proposed to host, host the place. Um, and it sort of shows the feasibility of holding conferences in Edinburgh pre exactly, um, precisely. And if anyone's interested, the next one's at Brighton and I'm talking, so everyone has to come. We, we believe that it's, it's Edinburgh is, outside of London, the, it is one of the most connected places in terms of people being able to get there, uh, internet connections, and the facilities it has. It is almost, it is, I won't say the capital of Scotland, because I'm going to get hit if I say that. And I'll get hit if I don't say that. So, but it is one of the major, major cities in Scotland and one of the major cities in the UK outside of London. And so we have this uh, local team. As I've been. Ex yeah, the, uh, it's a bit later on. If, okay, so here's some information about the local team, the people involved. To say there's a lot of us, and we've been uh, trying to organise this for quite some time. Uh, three people I of three groups I would like to mention is the Edinburgh University Computing Society, who have showed quite a bit of interest in helping us. Also, EdLug, the Edinburgh Linux Users Group, is a very active group with a lot of people, and I've had a lot of interest from there on making uh, DEPCOM 7 work incredibly well in Edinburgh. There's also, as some people may or may not have heard through various mailing lists, the Debian UK Society. Um, there's a lot of us who are very involved in Debian in the UK. We attend and organize a lot of conferences over there. And, and so, yep, we, people like uh, Steve especially, um, I think Phil's been around a few of them as well. We go to a lot of trade shows and we push quite heavily for that. We have a infrastructure in place for, um, for example, we have bank accounts for dealing with all the monies, the receipt system. So I should probably explain some of these photos. Uh, uh, this is Edinburgh Castle, which is right in the centre of Edinburgh, at the top of the medieval old town. He lives in Edinburgh, I don't, so. Okay, uh, here we have, it's, Edinburgh's basically, it's, it's the home of the Scottish Parliament. It's a large city of about 46,000 people. Sorry, 460,000 people. It's also host to the famous Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which is the, uh, it's the largest arts festival in the world. It happens over a two-week period, and basically the entire of Edinburgh is taken up by, by this festival. Uh, it uh, has many direct um, air links, and if not there, and, and if somebody can't find a link direct then there's really easy access from Glasgow Airport. I think it's a half an hour bus journey or something like that. Um, and the actual airport in, in relation to the venue, which I'll speak about uh, later, is about a 10 minute bus journey. 10, 20 minute bus journey. What kind of bus is there? Sorry? I don't, we don't have all the information in here. There's actually more information on that specifically on the wiki we've been using. So we can, we can get you that information, um, but not without the network in time. But certainly there are, there are quite a lot of net, um, budget airlines going there. And certainly I know there's, a lot, there's quite a lot of flights. Uh, there's some budget airlines from Germany, definitely. So. <laughs> so. Glasgow and get on the train and t take uh, take the train to Edinburgh. 
So uh, I can at least say that it's pretty, pretty easy to get there using Rhino or uh, German uh, I don't know about any others, but that's too. I was just comment that uh, Ryanair and German Airways sort of find you uh, Fargo, which is by and very easy to get to Edinburgh from there. Um, sort of debunking the myths of Edinburgh. It's not rainy. It really isn't. That's Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, on the rain falls on the west coast of the country. Uh, the east coast has the rain's already given up by the time it gets there. So. Yeah. Uh, it's also very central, as you can see by the little map. You can see the the circle on the left. Okay, the yeah, I'm sure people can read it. Uh, see the map. The circle on the left is uh, center of DD locations. Edinburgh is nearby, so it isn't that far apart from people who live in Scotland and have to travel over ma moors <laughs> by foot. And I'm not Scottish, kind of. So uh, it's, it's fairly easy to get to for most people. And this is one of the central parks in Edinburgh, um, which has a large hill in it. There's many, cent there's many public parks, many facilities. Edinburgh has been quite preserved as a historic city as well, um, as well as basically all the modern buildings in there have, have to have an external interface that sort of have external look that fits in with the whole city. And also, the, the local council are very keen on preserving lots of green areas, lots of public parks, lots of facilities for local people and, and anyone who wants to visit. Now, this is an external shot of the, one of the buildings we're thinking of holding this in. This is the Royal um, College of Physicians in central Edinburgh. And it's actually a lot larger than it looks because it goes back a long way. And those windows are huge. Now, we're looking at, we estimated our numbers about 350 to 400 delegates. Um, where there are other venues we're looking at as well, but we, without, um, certainly without knowing for definite if uh, the, the next EVCONF will be in Edinburgh, it's been quite hard to get figures out of people and uh, get costs down, basically, because we've only been able to get the their, their public costs, if you see what I mean. Um, so we haven't been able to negotiate any discounts. Now, the older part of this building dates back to the s about 1770s. It was designed by a famous architect, uh, Robert Allen, who some people may not know. It's also got some very modern conference facilities, uh, large lecture halls. Um, we hope to hold it in the large lecture theater and s something which they call the Great Hall for the for concurrent talks. Uh, there's also the new library, which holds up to 80 people, and f five individual breakout rooms, which are 25 to 50 each, and those can all be used for hack labs. The venue, when I've been speaking to, has been incredibly um, flexible. So I've explained that basically we're a bunch of geeks, and uh, we're not going to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning to go to a load of talks. But they've said, yeah, that's no problem. We can also have most of the uh, venues open 24 hours if we require. And they've just been incredibly flexible with however they want um, us to proceed with this. And I'll just move quickly on. You can see examples of the hack labs and then in the center of the central library area and the conference facilities at the bottom. Here's a basic idea of cost. Pictures again, another public park uh, where, again, We've been, it's been quite hard to get costs out of people, and these have been quite high costs because uh, we haven't been able to give them any commitments. Um, so we're probably looking at around uh, 20,000 UK pounds, 20,000 UK pounds for the venue, uh, 27, I believe, for the accommodation, which is about 30,000 euros, 40,000 euros. Accommodation we plan to host in hostels, which will be. Yeah, we'll basically take over entire hostels, which will be uh, eight to ten per room. Uh, yeah, so and unfortunately, we haven't been able to um, get any food costs because that is a, that can also be tied to the venue and the num and essentially also the number of people attending. So, uh, however, we do f certainly catering in the UK is very competitive, and it's easily able to 
arrange various discounts. We're also looking at uh, film crew catering as they have uh, experience in dealing with a large number of people and not a la carte menus and bits of sorbet between each menu and other frivolities which uh, we don't like and is basically going to be far too expensive. We hope to have a uh, day trip, it's very cheap in Edinburgh for two reasons. Uh, one of them, as there's a large group, we can arrange a large discount and also there are many art galleries and various different museums that are absolutely free for anyone to go to and are more than happy to help with groups. Connective, in terms of connectivity, Edinburgh is very well connected. There's a large number of ISPs. It's one of the central hubs in the UK for connectivity. We have currently sponsored, well, we have currently been offered uh, 20 megabits uh, just before I came to um, DevCon by was We've got at least three different ISPs who would like to sponsor the connectivity of DevConf, so yeah, we should be able to get some quite good uh, deal from between any of them. Yeah, and so yeah, just before we came, I was uh, talking to a large ISP called Blue Yonder over there, who have a main hub in Edinburgh, another in London, and they were they expressed interest about giving us basically just a two gigabit line or whatever we want, uh, whatever we can support, and just saying use that because they also host a Debian mirror and are keen to help with however they want to help with that. Um, what else is there? How much is a Big Mac in the UK or in Edinburgh? <laughs> Why would I eat a Big Mac? Uh, um, well, it's a very nice price index. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I should buy dollars. So um, like, in the UK? Three pounds? No, less than three pounds? I, I don't know. Um, I, have no, I still have no idea how much stuff it costs in McDonald's, but now I remember seeing on some of the bus stops they had adverts for their offers on Big Macs and so on. And I think there it was 99 pence that was the offer price, uh, which is so one pound, one and a half euros. But that's, that's the offer. Yeah, we, we, we can find this out later. Anyway, this is a, basically a shot of the Scottish Parliament that's in Edinburgh. More information about, uh, about the ISPs, etc., which I've just been talking about. So, and that's a general view of the nightlife. Well, the, not, not the nightlife, the skyline of Edinburgh at night. It is a bit boring for the nightlife of Edinburgh. But. Yeah, we, we, can, uh, we can discuss the uh, pubs and so on more if people want, but maybe that's, again, slightly off topic for... There's lots of swimming pools around. I'm sure we could negotiate a, a building just for DevConf if you really wanted to go swimming. Naked. Yeah. And, and another thing that I know is dear to some people, uh, that Edinburgh is one of the places I think, well, for what, well, one thing it has, one of the best public transport in the UK, it's one, place, one of the places where fewest people, I think the lowest percentage of people take a car when they go to work, most people walk or take a bus. Um, another thing that's relevant um, is I think the place with the most vegetarian restaurants in the UK, <laughs> so <laughs> it's certainly easy to get vegetarian food. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a vegetarian and they have good food, but it's also easy for vegetarians, unlike many places in the world. Yeah. You said that you have, uh, uh, sure. um, you said that you have different small rooms that could serve as half-lapse. Now, uh, 
I, I think that most people here like to clock together and just sit in a, one big, huge room happily hacking together. So is there also a room that would be uh, large and well-connected enough to serve as a hack lab for, say, 100 or 150 people? Um, yep, certainly the Great Hall, which is there, um, is easily converted into a hack lab. Uh, during the day while the talks are on, there's the library, which has 80 people. And I know certainly two of the larger, um, two, sorry, two of the larger workrooms, they are basically separated by foldable walls, similar to the ones around the edge here. So you can uh, separate them and pull them together. Uh, maybe we should just mention again, though, that um, I mean, this is a venue we've, we've been talking about at the moment as an example. But if, if we decide to have DevConf in Edinburgh, then we want to look, to look again around the venues just to make sure that one of a different one doesn't give a much better offer or whatever. Um, it's, it would be much, it's better to negotiate with several of them rather than just a single one. Can I just inject a small point of order? I noticed it's five to four. This talk is scheduled until five past four. Uh, we have now been talking about Edinburgh for a long while. Should we move on? Yes, okay. If, if anyone has any questions, they can come and see me afterwards. Yeah. No, sorry, we don't have the next time slot two because at quarter past four they scheduled the, the I A T N talk <laughs> here. Oh, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any further questions that you can come and ask? Okay, thank you. While these guys um, connect the, the next uh, notebook, I can just quickly tell something about Sarajevo, which would be another possible venue. Um, as far as I understand, they have about 10 people who would be very interested in helping. Um, one of them is, as far as I know, um, had already several bigger events organized. So sh I would, she's a lady, I'm not sure what's her name, I, not even if I could pronounce it. Um, and uh, she would be helping. Then um, uh, the one of the main organizers locally would be Safir, who couldn't attend because of visa issues here. Um, the event would mainly take place in the uh, Muslimic uh, Culture Center. We would get that for free. That is funded by, Sa uh, Sa what's the name of the country? Saudi Arabia meaning that it's, um, if they had the, cho the choice between expensive and very expensive equipment, they took the, the very expensive one. So um, they have like um, uh, translation equipment and cameras and uh, yeah, all the stuff that we had to rent here, for example, or bring, or bring along on site. And um, we could use that for free. Um, I, I'm not sure about the internet connection there, but I would expect that we can arrange that. Okay, great. That was 20 megabytes uh, throughput. Pardon? Yeah, I saw that and they said that would be a problem. Um, 
Um, yeah. Um, the, the recommendation would be um, student dorm and uh, food and the dormitory, which would be like uh, f two, three to four bedrooms, would be 16 to 17 euros per day per person. Um, that is as much as the accommodation was in Ehrenberg altogether um, without the food. Okay, yeah, right. So, um, yeah, well, it is drastically cheaper than Edinburgh or Mexico or uh, Brazil or whatever we had so, so far. What else do we have? Um, um, yeah, well, it has an international airport. It's the capital of the country, so we wouldn't need to go uh, far for shopping if we needed more. Uh, Bosnia. It's Bosnia. Sarajevo is the capital of Bosnia. And... Um, an issue that they might have is, uh, well, it's not, yeah, well, visas, you would need visas to go there if, well, European countries wouldn't need one, and the US either, um, but uh, like Brazilian people would need one, but um, yeah, well, Safia said that it was easily possible to get them in a timely fashion. Let's see. Um, um, the other, yeah? Uh, what's the availability of vegetarian food there and quality food in general? Yeah, well, I don't, uh, I wouldn't expect it to be a problem if we ar ar arrive in a, with like three to four hundred people, you can make arrangements in any way. And it's, um, apparently they would even be able to serve kosher food, um, which is um, because they have, um, <laughs> because they, they, it's a mu partly Muslim country. So because of that, I also expect uh, they, them to be flexible in other regards, food-wise. Yeah? Um, is, it a, is the country very conservative? Um, Sorry. You can just go on. Sorry? Just go on. Yeah, I was talking about uh, with this with uh, Safir. Many th uh, he says that well, too many people think that uh, Bosnia is like uh, Saudi Arabia or si similar places where it's uh, homogeneous. But the fact is, even after the ethnic cleansing they had and the, the wars and all, it's a very plural uh, country which uh, has maybe 40, 50 percent Muslims, but it's quite open and uh, well. It has a very multi-ethnic, multicultural uh, background and reality. Uh, I don't expect it to be any more problematic to get proper food for vegetarians than, say, here, because well, here we have a we we had a real problem for that. Uh, I can assure you that uh, that will not be the issue from uh, from what I've talked with uh, Safir. Other people have been concerned about shooting and um, crime. <laughs> Apparently, the war is over, and um, <laughs> and the and the crime rate is just normal European rate there. So we uh, that's not an issue really. He said European. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a comparison. I haven't been there. Not at any rate, any, anyway. Any other questions about Sarajevo? I, I can't think I of have, anything else right one. now. How many, how many people will be involved in the local team here, Andreas? Look at me, please. Here. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the how local many team, people is involved in the local team? He said that um, they were, they were, the whole look would be very interested in doing that, the Sarajevo or Bosnian look. And um, 10 people committed. committed to but with the organizing, for yes. uh, we saw that. Remember, I said the state. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I remember because that. Because the, the problem with Gunnar is that he, he think and he was fat. Yeah. No, I don't know. I, what I remember that. Yes, and I I, I pressed Safia for 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 real numbers there. Of course, well, yeah. We can't really know. That he said ten. 
Any other questions? Bricks and time? Okay. Here you go. Does it work? Yes, it works. So, hello everybody to our presentation about Brixen. Um, first, as introduction, uh, that's the link of our homepage we've made for this Debian conference. <laughs> Cut. That should be a T at the beginning. Just a T. <laughs> should I write it? Uh, this one is working good. No, it's uh, the name is Chukma, so it's a T at the beginning. Netzwerkhausbildung. Dot it. And um, yes, uh, a few words um, about how it became possible for our group to um, join this Debian conference. Um, it was because of the South Tyrol Free Conference last year, where we met Kurt Gramlich a member of the Scholar Linux team. And um, yes, he um, um, made us the subject free software a little bit more familiar. And after being in contact with him for a longer time period, uh, he told us that it would be possible, there would be the chance to uh, go to this uh, Debian conference six in Mexico and meet people um, working the whole year for free software. So for us, this was uh, very interesting since the beginning. And after a student selection, the group um, was found. Um, the group was found uh, as, it was, as it would travel to this Debian conference. And uh, yes, we have started to set up a homepage. And by, yes, by elaborating texts and um, taking photos of uh, different sightseeings and so on. And um, this page should be the reference when the question was to provide useful information about our hometown. So that's the URL. And for those who want to have a look. Let's continue with the slideshow. Uh, first, something about the town. Um, the history of the town. Soon after the time of um, the birth of Christ, um, Roman legionnaires uh, settled down in the valley and called the settlement Brixina, which stands for settlement on the hill. Brixen now has approximately uh, 20,000 inhabitants and locals in the valley called Isaktal, where the two rivers Isaktal and Rians join. Brixen has um, a lot of arbors, bridges, and parks, uh, many churches, um, its cathedral, and the crypt museum, the cloister, Gothic uh, frescoes, frescoes, I won't say, and of course the fortress um, named Hofburg, um, which was former the residence of the bishop. Yes, typical for South Tyrol are the, maybe the next picture, this is the park. <laughs> yes, gastronomy. Typical for South Tyrol are um, rustic style rooms um, where you can eat home food uh, specialities like knödel, how do we call them, and uh, dug nuts or smoked ham, and uh, spaghetti for sure, also pizza. And yes, every two years, Brixen takes place, at Brixen takes place the Altstadtfest, which is a festivity of uh, South Tyrolean um, customs, where people is dressed um, with traditionally costumes and present homemade food. Uh, you're a little bit... Uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> well, <laughs> and um, yes, present... Um, Typically homemade food and uh, folk music is played and uh, you also souvenirs are offered. So let's come to the free time. And 
there is a large, um, large range of activities um, offered for sports people or those who are interested in uh, um, activity holidays. Um, in Brixen, you can go mountain hiking, cycle along the river. Yes? Yeah. Yes, for sure, for sure. But um, that would be a problem for me because. Um, I can take that. Too. Yes. Um, well, let's go on. Uh, cycle along the river, play tennis, go uh, paragliding. <laughs> Nearby Brixen, there is um, there are a lot of forest lanes where you can um, go hiking, take a trip into the natural alpine environments. Um, Enjoy the Alps. Yes. Okay, let's go to the last section, which is the school. And just... <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit fast. <laughs> they want to see them. <laughs> yes, let's talk about the school. Uh, the name of our professional school is uh, Josef Christa, um, Christian Chukmal, and uh, there are about 600 uh, students and 80 teachers. We have different fields of study, uh, like wood, metal, trade, and the field we are attending to is uh, the one of electronics and uh, computer technique. The school is in the possession of six computer rooms, which could be used as a hack lab, um, an assembly room um, where the presentation could happen, and we could also use the belonging canteen of the school. Yes, and also high-speed internet access won't be a problem because right next to the school, uh, there's a provider, so. Well, that's the canteen too. Yeah, <laughs> almost. <laughs> no, um, yes, I had to improve a little bit my presentation, but <laughs> no, all right, I finish here. Um, I think I could give you a little impression of Brixen, yes? Yes, that will be Stockholm's work. No, uh, I think I could give you an impression of Brixen and um, if the seventh, uh, the eighth edition of the Debian takes uh, part, takes place in uh, Brixen, I won't say, uh, I will say, see you in Italy. So, thanks you, thank you for your uh, attention. They, they had to skip uh, past the, the snow pictures, which are actually one of the uh, good parts about uh, Brixen, because, hello, um, because we could try to have a winter skiing that comes there, which would be something very different than we, would, we had so far. Um, in the summer, the snow is gone, usually. <laughs> Yeah. Pardon what? Yes, we, that would be during January, February, I guess. Pardon? Aha, uh -huh, there's there are glaciers there, and you could ski there even. Um, yeah, well. Um, the you asked about the accommodation. Um, there are. Uh, boarding schools in town, which uh, could be a cheap accommodation. Um, there are also hotels, and the hotels asked for like uh, 60 euros per day, per, per, per night, plus breakfast. That would be, be without um, uh, lunch and dinner. Um, so we, that would be expensive. But um, we could also use the um, cantina of the school, which would be cheap again. Um, the sleeping areas are, uh, yeah, well, we, we unfortunately we can't use the gym apparently for safety reasons. Um, that would be another budget option, Unfo yeah, but it, it, that looks hard. Um, uh, pardon? C connectivity? Yeah, um, there are different airports around the place. 
um, the uh, best connected would most likely be Munich. Um, and you could go directly from the airport to the um, venue by train. That would be a two and a half hours travel, I think. More or less like um, here. Um, what else? Um, there are other airports and uh, around the uh, on the Italian side. I'm not sure um, which ones that are. Okay, EasyJet goes there. Yes, to Venice. Yes. To Venice, right? You could, uh, uh, Venice is quite close too. Andreas, um, people with special needs here, here, ah, here. Yeah. People uh, with special uh, needs. Same question of the France. That's not a problem, really. Yeah. Um, it's a school. It's very modern, and you have, yeah, well, everything there you could ever dream of. I kind of dislike the focus of this location on the skiing and all the leisure activities. I think DebConf is for working on Debian, for meeting developers, not for skiing. And I think uh, it's sending the wrong message to sponsors to choose a location like this. I don't think that um, uh, we have worked little here. Do you think that so? Do you think that we have worked too little well, here? No, I think we have done a lot of work here. Uh, at least a lot of people have atten attended the talks, but if there's a choice be go between going skiing during the day and attending talks, I think there's going to be a fair amount of people that are going skiing. Um, uh, we have two pools here, and three actually, and uh, people ac did attend pool, uh, pools anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, talks, uh, talks even. Yeah, but I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't actually expect any problems there, N not at all. Um, people people um, can stay longer like they do here, or they could um, come early, or they, we could have a day trip to, to that pla to, to, to ski for skiing. And I, don't, I don't think that people just stop working because of, 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 because of the presence of snowy hills in the area. Okay, uh, one, one concern I have is that we lost maybe, I cannot give numbers, but maybe 50 people who couldn't come because they work at schools or, or study and uh, not having uh, DevConf in July as we have uh, tried to do at least uh, twice during the last four years, <laughs> which has proven to be uh, a good choice, I think, uh, couldn't attend. So I would uh, strongly advise against January, February. Yeah. Um. I, I'd like to agree. Okay, I'd like to agree on this, even without a microphone, um, because oh, it's back. Okay. <laughs> um, because uh, this doesn't only apply to schools; it also applies to universities. They usually have uh, the summer time off, and there's lots of people here who are either studying or working at universities. So I really advise against uh, dropping the the summer time, the summer day. And if you want to use the schools infrastructure, we need to take That's the holidays like anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's winter for us. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we shouldn't forget the, the global nature of that one here. And, how, and so even though the, pe the, the people come from different backgrounds, it's very different from different people when they have. Um, we have to yeah. expect more Europeans, but usually people manage to go for ever uh, and during those times to for, for vacation too. So I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's, actually, it's not the, the the scheme would be a nice bonus. It's not the goal. It's just um, an additional um, yeah. Nice the problem is with it, we can't see the goal, actually. What, what do you so mean there is, the there is another challenge that we need to remember from a scheduling standpoint. Um, we really need to pay attention to when other significant events in the open source community. Many of us are accustomed to being able to attend or scheduled. And uh, January, February is not a great time because there is stuff happening in other parts of the world. And um, July, the only real thing that comes up routinely is the Ottawa Linux Symposium and Associated Kernel Summit in the last week of the month. 
And when we've held DevConf in July, we've been pretty successful at having that be the week before. I mean, I end up doing the last minute fly from one to the other thing, but it hasn't been a real inconvenience for folks, I think. So we just, we have to be conscious of these events and wherever we decide to put it on the calendar, make sure we're not stomping on something that would cause significant numbers of potential attendees to have a tough choice. I think that um, we do need to, to have more research on that because I actually um, remember had p people not coming because of the Colonel Summit, for example, really repeatedly, for example. And, uh, I would like to say something. Uh, apart from the date in which we do the DevConf, I think it will be very important to uh, any place we do the DevConf for the hug labs to be close to the uh, place where the talks are do, uh, being given. Uh, and everything is so much more close than here and in Finland that uh, because this way we lose a lot of time traveling uh, all around and many people tend to stay in the same place and lose t uh, talks on <clears throat> not doing so much work because of that. Do you think that we are closer or further away from the hack labs now? Uh, I think uh, we are far away. Actually, that's not right. In, 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 in Finland, we walk like 10 to 15 minutes. I'm, say, I'm saying that in Finland and in here, we, are, ah, we okay. were pretty Horrible, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh, okay. Mm -hmm. Got some. How are you? Um, yeah. Helsinki, the lecture halls were too far from everything. Many people yes, say in the hack labs because they don't much work. I mean, I am happy sorry, but many people stay in the hack labs. Okay. Um, since uh, nobody seems to do any other anyway, so um, yeah. Um, a, question, a question that I had was, uh, about the size of the local team, because we had that for uh, the other two cities already. So um, I think the local team would be um, would have different, uh, um, yeah, well, peop very different people characteristically. Um, no, well, there, for example, there's the headmaster of the of the place, which would be. Um, No, I don't. I don't. I. I, do, I think that he is would would count as local team because he has ex excellent contacts to all kinds of um, places, and he's ex actually the guy who's pushing lots of of this. Really. Can I decide, or why, how do you how you can you tell really? You don't know him really at, at all. Uh, well, I, I think that is so the question of local team is of course up to you to or to the organizers to check. But there's something to say again about when do we do DEPCONF. If you want to do DEPCONF in January or February, the least remember we, are, we want to release Edge in December, and I doubt that we have anybody available to do lots of work for you in December then. That would be really an issue. So I really vote for doing DEPCONF in, in, in June or July, like we did in recent years. I don't see how it will work to do it in January. Another thing is that if you do it in Europe... Pardon? Uh, another I wouldn't thing, be happy with that either, frankly speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might I point out that we're many minutes into the next talk? It's already 4.24. I think we can um, uh, just continue this at the next uh, time slot after this, um, when we have some other DevConf thing. <laughs> yes, that's a totally different topic, and but still people might be interested, I'm not sure. Okay, um, you can come um, later on or ask other stuff directly, I guess. You had an equipment. Okay, no, bye.